There's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. But what if the words were stolen? What if you were incapable of speaking them? What if for once you couldn't set the story straight? Couldn't tell someone how magnificent you once really were? What if your fate had forever been decided to be old and unwanted? This is the story of something that is experiencing just that. This is a story of mystery, Pontiacs, rusty pipes, creepy gates, and lots and lots of trash. This is a story of the Ramsey Theater. Recording an error. Please check the area code and the number and try your call again. Hold up. I guess we should explain how we got here. We were curious about the mysterious old movie theater and wanted to know more about it, so we decided to call the Swartztown Borough. We asked them who owned the building and they told us that it was William C. Neal. So naturally, we decided to Google him. And Googled him, and Googled him, and Googled him again. It turns out, there's not much on the guy. Besides finding out that he doesn't pay his library fines, and he has a mowing violation because he doesn't cut his grass, William Neal was essentially a non-existent man. Besides getting his address and phone number, how are we going to contact him? Well, naturally, since we had his phone number, we decided to- And that's where you guys came in. Obviously, you heard that his phone was disconnected, he probably didn't pay that bill either. So, we decided to do some good old-fashioned detective work and get to the root of this by going to his house. But it wasn't really a house. It was more like a trailer. But a very sketchy trailer with multiple cars outside, all of which were filled with trash. But then again, it did match his inside of his house, which was also filled with trash. Well, trash that isn't a single great cat. We knocked on his door several times, but he never answered. So. How were we going to get inside this building? As we left the house, or trailer, it started to rain. And as we all know, when it starts to rain, something bad is about to happen. Wait a second, Anna, wasn't that Pontiac, like, following behind us at first? Yeah, but they put in Taylor House. Wait, uh, they're behind us now. Wait, uh, you yeah, know, they probably just forgot something at home or something, I don't know, that's weird. Hey Matt, I think we're going to the church up here. Just let him pass us, that's weird. Okay. Wait, wait, Caitlin, they're slowing down. Wait, why? I don't know. Why are they stopping the little road? Caitlin, Caitlin, they're taking a picture! Oh my gosh! gosh! Why are they, they throwing it? Why is it throwing it? Matt, go, go, go! <gasps> Matt, go! Wait, they turned down another road. We're good. Alright, Matt, back to my house. We're good. Wait, Anna, they're making a U-turn! Anna, they're making a U-turn! They're following us! Matt, Matt, speed away! Matt, go, go, go! go, 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 go. Matt. Oh gosh, I think we lost them. Yes, we were chased by a psychopathic car. So after we decided to stop screaming and actually come to our senses, we drove around the blocks a few times to gather our thoughts and make sure that the car wasn't following us. Then we decided to head to the place that we were supposed to be filming this whole entire time, the Ramsey Theater. At this point, we were deciding whether it was even safe to go to the theater or not after our incident with the Pontiac. But we decided that we were in too deep and went there and decided to take some pictures. After investigating the building, we decided to walk inside the alleyway and discover that there was a broken window. We tried to climb up inside of it to see in, but it was too high. So we decided to go to the neighbors and see if anyone knew anything about the building. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. Do you know anything about the old movie theater building? No. No? Not at all? Uh, it's been here long? a long ass time, I know. <laughs> yeah. And you don't know anything about it, like it's just kind of been there? Have you ever seen anybody in it or anything? Um, I've seen kids break into it. That's about it. Okay. 
They would right. go because we have cameras or whatever. They'd go behind here, and then the next day the doors would be open. Since that guy did not know much about the theater, and no one else seemed to either, we decided to do our own investigation about the Ramsey Theater. It turns out that the theater was built in 1920 by Charles Ramsey, and had 348 seats for patrons. The first floor of the theater was home to one screen, where two movies were shown, but only on Saturday nights. A town local named Margaret E.D. Jones would often play the piano during the movies in the 1920s when it was first built, as the majority of films at this time were silent. The theater's basement also had a bowling alley and a billiard hall, which were frequented by the men of the town. Charles Ramsey died in 1948, and his wife sold the building in 1956 to Emory Trout after operating it as a movie theater still. The top floor of the movie theater had two apartments, one of which was occupied by Mrs. Joynes, who lived there with her family. She said that she would often be able to hear the movies from her apartment while taking her evening bath. Her uncle also owned an ice cream parlor near the theater, and after the movies, people would frequent it, she said. Much of the theater's history, though, after 1960 remains a mystery, as it was sold to boy Now, sadly, all that remains are the fragments of the building, revealing little of its former glory and pep of the 1920s. While the hands of time have changed and shaped the building into its current state, one unwavering constant is the building's shadow, a dark memory that will remain in the minds of those who live here. Sadly, we may forever be wondering what lies just inside those locked glass doors, waiting to be watched just like the countless movies that once played upon the now blank screen.